The Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker, was always meant to be the most powerful Force user in history, the one who would finally bring balance to the Force and destroy the Sith. However, not everything turned out exactly how the Jedi saw the prophecy coming to fruition. While Anakin was the Chosen One, he would venture down a multiple decades long path where he strayed far from the light of the Jedi until making his way back through the courage and love of his son, Luke Skywalker. And while his time as Darth Vader is where we learn much of his life, his time spent as the Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker is what we're going to focus on today. We're going to go through Anakin's life from his birth all the way until his death with a detour around his years as the Emperor's most deadly enforcer, Darth Vader, to determine just how powerful the Chosen One truly was. We are skipping the Sith portion of his life as I already have a 40 plus minute video discussing his entire time as the deadly Sith apprentice. Additionally, I will only be covering material that is considered canon, so no sources prior to the expanded universe becoming legends. We will strictly be focusing on the canon version of the character. And with all that said, how powerful is Anakin Skywalker? Is he strong enough to destroy Hydra, the powerful boss from Raid Shadow Legends? Well, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, so while you're here, let me tell you some more. Hydra is one of the strongest bosses in all of Raid Shadow Legends, and it sports multiple heads, so it's kinda like each head is its own boss fight in and of itself. So let's highlight a few of the heads you might struggle with. The Head of Wrath. As a wise man, or alien once said, fear leads to anger, or in this case, wrath. This head weakens and taunts your team, but after you hit it 15 times, the Head of Wrath gives itself a powerful buff, Vengeance. This triples its attack power until the end of the next turn, then it hits back. This head deals insane damage, so you need to be careful about letting it get its vengeance, or your team will be wiped out. And we all know that anger, or in this case wrath, leads to hate, and hate, hate leads to suffering. The head of suffering is all about just that. Suffering has a special new effect called pain link, which lets the head share some of the damage it takes with you. If you hurt this thing too much, you're going to suffer as well. So make sure to bring champions who can deal with the debuff, or you might see your whole team fall. For new players, you can get your hands on Stagnite, one of the best champions around, as well as a skin for Stagnite designed by JonTron. Just use the promo code JTSKIN before October 7th and it's easy as that. Don't worry if you're a new player, you can still get Stagnite and the skin through an in-game event. And everybody likes free stuff, right? Especially when that free stuff is a free legendary champion. Check out Sun Wukong, Raid's take on the Monkey King from Chinese mythology. He's made his grand appearance in the game and it couldn't be easier to get him. Just log in seven different days between now and October 23rd and you get Sun Wukong for free. There's no evil bosses to take down, there's no minions to slay, there's no giant monsters to battle. All you have to do is log in for seven different days and it's just that easy. With all this exciting stuff and more coming to Raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Use our link in the description or scan our QR code to get insane bonuses like an epic champion, Talia, and other useful things such as energy refills, skill tomes, and XP boosters. And thank you again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. How do you know so much? I listen to all the traders and star pilots who come through here. I'm a pilot, you know, and someday I'm gonna fly away from this place. Anakin Skywalker had no father. He was conceived of the Force itself, despite the theories that are out there that say Sidious actually created Anakin by manipulating the Force within Shmi Skywalker. While that was something that Anakin thought may be true, it was nothing but an unfounded fear as confirmed by Charles Soule, the author of the 2017 Darth Vader comic book run. And while no one in the galaxy knew anything about Anakin when he was born, after meeting the young Force user, they quickly realized that he truly was a miracle. Sidious had this to say about Anakin's birth, quote, Born a slave with untold power, and the boy was blessed with a power unrivaled by any except my own. His master Obi-Wan said, quote, The force within him is stronger than any known Jedi. 
After Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn found Anakin on Tatooine, the old Jedi took a keen interest in Anakin, sensing a powerful well of Force ability. Qui-Gon, believing the child was special, took a blood test to determine how many midichlorians were present within his blood. Within the Star Wars universe, midichlorians are minuscule life forms which reside within the cells of all living organisms. The Force works through the midichlorians, which grants living beings the ability to use the Force. No matter the number of midichlorians, each individual could harness the incredible power of the Force. However, the higher the number of midichlorians, the easier it was and the more powerful the user could become. Essentially, midichlorians provided a good gauge to determine a Force user's potential potential. After testing the young Skywalker, Qui-Gon found that Anakin had the highest midichlorian count in recorded history, surpassing the likes of Mace Windu, Porter Engel, and even Grandmaster Yoda. A person with four to 5,000 midichlorians per cell would be enough to be considered a Force-sensitive, but Anakin's count was upwards of 20,000. He was an unparalleled Force prodigy. Despite this, the Jedi Council was wary to allow Anakin to be trained as he was far too old per their standards and he struggled mightily with attachments, something not uncommon for children his age. However, the Jedi typically bypassed this issue by recruiting younglings before they were able to form such attachments. With all of this in mind, the Council denied his admittance into the Order and refused to train him. However, after the death of Qui-Gon Jinn, his apprentice Obi-Wan Kenobi was promoted to Jedi Knight and took Anakin on as his Padawan learner, despite the misgivings of the Council. He is the Chosen One. He will bring balance. Shortly after, Anakin would receive his Padawan braid and meet Senator Palpatine, who was in fact the Sith Master at the head of the Rule of Two, known as Darth Sidious. After meeting Anakin, Sidious sensed immense potential immediately, and since he had just lost his incredibly powerful apprentice, Darth Maul, Sidious set his sights on becoming close with the young Skywalker in the hopes that he could eventually turn him to the dark side. Throughout his early years, Anakin displayed his aptitude for the Force, being much further along in his abilities than others who had been there far longer than he was. Eventually, the Council would warm up to the idea that he was indeed the child of prophecy who would bring balance to the Force. Quote, Anakin was believed to be a virgence, an entity surrounded by a rare concentration of Force energy. The Jedi Council even convinced themselves that the child was the Chosen One. Sidious, disguised as the innocent Senator Palpatine, would frequently visit the Jedi Temple, becoming a trusted confidant to many young Jedi who he saw potential in, but none more so than Anakin Skywalker. During one of these visits, Palpatine stopped to watch Anakin train against a program that Anakin created that attempted to replicate Darth Maul based on detailed stories he heard from Obi-Wan about the deadly Sith Lord's fighting style. In this simulation, a Padawan Anakin was not able to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the skilled foe, but he was actually able to come out on top, something Sidious thought to be incredibly impressive. After all, Sidious was the one who trained Darth Maul, who is also stated to be one of the most highly trained Sith of all time. And for more info on how powerful Darth Maul really was, check out my video on him. Even if the simulation was just an approximation of Darth Maul, it's still incredible for a Padawan as inexperienced as Anakin to accomplish such a feat. Anakin and Obi-Wan would go on many adventures alongside one another, and the duo would consistently train every aspect of the Force to better hone their abilities. Anakin was growing rapidly, becoming even more skilled than his master before even being granted the rank of Jedi Knight. However, Anakin exhibited issues with impulsiveness that held him back. Eventually, the Master and Apprentice would come face to face with Darth Maul's replacement, Darth Tyrannus, known throughout the galaxy as Count Dooku. Dooku was considered a master with the blade when he was part of the Jedi Order, and he would often spar with his master, Yoda, to display to the rest of the Order what the best of the best could accomplish. And after leaving the Order, Dooku found a new master with whom he continued to sharpen his skills. 
As Anakin was still just a Padawan when he first went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Count, he stood little chance and decided to rush in head first instead of coordinating with his master Obi-Wan, and Anakin was defeated easily. However, Anakin soon received a cybernetic replacement for his lost limb and redoubled his efforts with the lightsaber. But now, the galaxy was changing rapidly. The Jedi Order was thrust into the front lines of a war that they were never really trained to be a part of, and Padawans were forced to grow up and face the harsh realities of war. Desperate for more Jedi Knights to lead following the massacre on Geonosis, the Jedi Council decided to forego the Jedi Trials for a select few Padawans and grant them the status of Jedi Knight, the most exceptional of these being Anakin Skywalker. While the Clone Wars began in earnest, Anakin was still struggling with his cybernetics, but was determined to overcome this newfound disability. As it did offer benefits that flesh and bone did not, that being enhanced strength, which he incorporated into his already brutal fighting style. What was unaffected by his new arm were his senses, which were exceptional at this time. He could sense the destination of blaster bolts after they'd been fired to quickly determine whether it was even worth his time to deflect them. Additionally, he was so in tune with the Force that he could sense subtle shifts in even the most stoic beings, such as Mace Windu. Not long after this, Anakin would duel Asajj Ventress for the first time. Asajj was a former trainee of a Jedi Master, but was eventually found and turned by Count Dooku to become his Sith assassin. Having trained directly under the incredibly skilled Count, Asajj was no slouch. However, even in their first duel, she could tell that Anakin was in another league. However, she was faster, more agile, which kept her battles with Anakin much closer than they would have been otherwise. After defeating the Sith Assassin with the help of Obi-Wan, Anakin realized that he could learn a lot and pass on his knowledge if he were to be given a Padawan, although he was still somewhat unsure about actually committing to training someone else. But that opportunity came knocking shortly after, as Yoda saw weaknesses within Anakin that a Padawan could help shore up, that Padawan being Ahsoka Tano. Anakin would spend much of the Clone Wars alongside both his former master and his new student. Together, this trio would become notorious thorns in the side of the Separatists, while simultaneously becoming the heroes of the Clone Wars to the Republic. Anakin would duel Asajj Ventress and Count Dooku multiple times throughout the Clone Wars, and each time he would close the gap just a bit more between himself and the legendary former Jedi Master, Count Dooku. And the time would come when Anakin would really have to put his skills to the test in a life or death duel with the Count. After the capture of Senator Palpatine, Anakin and Obi-Wan were dispatched to rescue him and take out both General Grievous and Count Dooku if possible. While Grievous escaped, the two were able to corner the Count and engage him in battle. While Dooku took care of Obi-Wan without any issue, Anakin was a different story. Boasting that his powers had doubled since the last time they met, Anakin was confident he could defeat the Count. However, things were not as easy as they seemed. Anakin was surprised to see that the Count was still able to rebuff his attacks and counter Anakin with ease. Becoming more and more frustrated with their stalemate, Anakin tapped into the dark side to overpower the more skilled combatant and secure victory. By this time, Anakin was considered immensely powerful, and he was beginning to rival the most revered Jedi in the Order, Mace Windu and Jedi Grandmaster Yoda. Despite not being a fully-fledged Jedi Master, Anakin was certainly more powerful than the majority of the Jedi Council. Yoda and Mace are both at various points called the Jedi's most powerful Force users, but Anakin should not be left out of that conversation. He's right behind them by the end of the Clone Wars, and would have likely surpassed them shortly after if he would have remained a Jedi. Aside from the various statements claiming that Anakin was one of the Jedi Order's most powerful practitioners, we have various feats to back these claims up. Most important being his defeat of Count Dooku, a character who would regularly beat down Jedi Masters like Obi-Wan and lesser Masters actually stood no chance against him. You might assume this was only because of the Count's legendary status as a peerless duelist, but his force ability was not to be taken lightly either. He trounced every opponent he faced in one-on-one -on -one combat with only a few exceptions, those being a dark side amped Quinlan Vos, Yoda, Mace Windu, and Anakin Skywalker. 
Yoda and Anakin are both stated to have easily defeated Dooku. Of course, Anakin needed the dark side to do so, and Dooku himself admitted that he could not defeat Mace Windu, showing us that there were levels to this, and Anakin was always moving ever closer to the two shining beacons of the Jedi Order. And while he was in the conversation, he wasn't there quite yet. As I mentioned, Anakin did tap into the uncontrolled power of the dark side to defeat Dooku, although Sidious did claim that Anakin was far younger and more powerful than the Count, so Anakin may not have needed to resort to tapping into the dark power to defeat the former Jedi. To put this level of power into perspective, Yoda was literally able to move mountains during his time as Jedi Grandmaster. He went up against giants of living stone whose laugh could break apart the ground and shook asteroids orbiting the planet. Their laugh alone generated over 476 kilotons, which is enough to decimate an entire city. At one point, the giant attempted to squash the diminutive Jedi Master while having its power amplified by a group of its worshippers, but Yoda was able to stop the literal mountain-sized behemoth in its tracks without much strain. After falling to the dark side, Anakin became Darth Vader, and his new master, Darth Sidious, claimed that he would eventually become more powerful than himself as well as Yoda, showing us again that Anakin was probably just under these two at this point. And since Anakin spends the next few decades as a servant of the dark side and goes as Darth Vader, you might think that this is the end of the video, especially since I already have a 40 plus minute video on Darth Vader, but we're not quite finished. As Anakin Skywalker does make multiple appearances after forsaking the name of Vader and returning back to the light side. So after seeing his son being tortured, not only does Anakin deny his master Darth Sidious, but he is forced to endure the most powerful and potent force lightning ever admitted by his master. Sidious was the most powerful being in the galaxy for many, many years and always made sure that he was above his apprentice to prevent his death at the hands of Vader. One such time was when Vader was tested by his master to survive a gauntlet of deadly traps without using the Force. Eventually, this led Vader to Exegol, where he planned to cut down Sidious and take his place as Emperor. However, Sidious had other plans. Sidious showed Vader the massive kyber crystal that was bled by the Sith cultists. This kyber crystal would eventually go on to power the Final Order, a fleet of Star Destroyers each as powerful as the Death Star itself. The Death Star can output forces exceeding 16.512 ninatons, which is enough to destroy a dwarf star. This is a number so astronomical that it's tough to properly explain, and honestly, the human mind really does struggle to comprehend numbers that are this large, but this is quintillions of times more powerful than the most powerful nuclear bomb on record. So with that in mind, Sidious is able to literally control this power, the power of 1,080 Death Stars, so multiply 16 ninatons by 1,080, and we can begin to understand Sidious's unlimited power. That number, while not unlimited, is really really big. It's enough to destroy a star. Characters who were simply in the vicinity of Sidious at this time were either killed or permanently scarred by his mere presence on Exegol, and Vader himself could not withstand Sidious's aura. While Sidious doesn't have the ability to shatter stars in canon due to him not having the destructive capacity to do so, his inability to destroy a star and his destructive capacity essentially just means that his range with the Force does not extend wide enough to destroy or engulf a star. This level of power, while being seemingly ridiculous at face value, is not only consistent within this continuity, but it's even more mind-boggling in Legends, where Sidious had the capability to destroy the the entire universe itself. Following this, Sidious and Vader both continued their quest for power, training, dueling, becoming more powerful, etc, etc. Anakin, after realizing his son would die at the hands of Sidious, returned to the light side and endured force lightning powerful enough to destroy stars, and he did so long enough to kill his master and then bring balance to the force, all while being exhausted following a fierce duel with his son just moments prior, not to mention that Darth Vader had an inherent weakness to electricity due to his suit. However, Anakin would not survive these wounds and would become one with the Force. Anakin 
Anakin was not satisfied with this ending, and as his consciousness was being assimilated into the living force where he would lose all sense of self and become one with the force, Anakin simply refused. His will was so powerful that he was able to overpower the will of the force and with some help from Obi-Wan, become a force ghost through sheer power of will. Something that Anakin had shown the potential to do decades prior. So, during the Clone Wars, one of the Mortis gods, known as the Father, brought Anakin to Mortis, where he wanted the Chosen One to take his place to keep balance on Mortis. To do so, Anakin was tested against the son and the daughter, the living embodiments of the dark side and the light side, who could tear the fabric of the universe apart if they were ever to escape their realm. Not only was Anakin able to stop their fighting, he completely overpowered their combined level of power and bent the force to his will, compelling them to submit to his almighty power. This is the only time we ever see Anakin realize his full potential while he's alive, which is the potential to control the entirety of the Force, universe creating or destroying power. After becoming one with the Force, Anakin was still an active hero within the galaxy, appearing when he was needed most. First with Ahsoka, who was at the brink of death, he brought her to the world between worlds for one final lesson. Next, when his son Luke's spirit was trapped on Exegol. Luke was in a battle with Sith wraiths, who he was powerless against. Not only could his father appear as a force ghost on the most powerful dark side nexus in the galaxy, but Anakin was able to battle the ghosts, beat them back, and return his son to Tython safely. Finally, Anakin arrived on Exegol in spirit to lend his almighty power to Rey, who needed it to destroy Sidious once and for all, and bring balance back to the Force as Anakin once did. While Rey channeled the power of every Jedi ever, Anakin's full power at peak potential could control both aspects of the Force itself, and likely dwarfs the full potential of anyone outside the Skywalker bloodline, so really... Were all the Jedi necessary, or was Anakin more than enough? You are strong and wise, Anakin, and I am very proud of you. I have trained you since you were a small boy. I have taught you everything I know. And you have become a far greater Jedi than I could ever hope to be. In the end, Anakin had the potential to outshine any Jedi who ever lived. However, his legacy as the Chosen One will always be marred by his time as Darth Vader. While Anakin did end up becoming more powerful than Yoda, Mace Windu, Porter Angle, Avar Chris, and every other legendary Jedi of the past, no one but Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, Luke, Rey, and Sidious ever witnessed this power first hand. Which is a real shame. I think it would be cool if Star Wars started doing what ifs like Marvel did so we could see a light side Anakin who remained on the light side his entire life. I think that would be a cool series to do sort of like Visions but with what happened in you know the mainline story in canon if you will. So that's all I've got for you guys today. What do you think? Do you think Anakin was the most powerful Jedi ever even before he reached his full potential on Mortis? Let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to like and subscribe. It does really, really help us out with the whole algorithm. And thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. And remember the motto, it's Anakin Skywalker over everything. And I'll see you guys next time.